Welcome to this class on art history. We will be dealing with a very significant modern art movement in this session, Cubism. Naturally, our first question will be, what is Cubism? And how would this change the course of art history? Cubism is a highly influential modern art movement. It is considered by some art historians as the first abstract movement in the history of art. There is a controversy regarding this attribution and some historians consider the Blue Rider group to be the first pure abstract art movement. But there is no dispute about the fact that the Cubist painters created a radically new pictorial language which shifted the way how the world is represented on a flat pictorial surface. It altered the way space and time were conceived in a painting. Since Renaissance period, artists were using linear perspective to create illusionist naturalism on the picture plane. Even modern art movements like Realism and Impressionism were using the same perspective principles developed during the Renaissance. Cubism proposed a new approach to reality. It challenged the single observer position required by the linear perspective system. Later in the session, we will go deeper into how it was achieved. Cubism originated in Paris, France during early 20th century, to be precise, between 1907 to 1914. As we are aware, the second half of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century were very productive in many fields including science, technology and art. Great art movements like Impressionism, Post-Impressionism and Fauxism innovated new ways of seeing. Einstein formulated his theory of relativity in 1906. Our experience of time, which is thought to be absolute, was questioned. Realms which may exist beyond third dimension were scientifically approved. Objects were taken to the laboratory, segmented and analyzed. This was also the prime period of colonization. Art and culture of colonized nations from Africa and Asia were imported to Europe. They were also analyzed and adapted. It is in this context that we should understand a Cubist artwork. The major painters of the movement were Georges Brack, Pablo Picasso and Joan Gris. There are many other painters and sculptors who contributed significantly to the movement but it was Brack and Picasso who developed the pictorial language of Cubism and thus considered as the inventors of Cubism. Some art historians consider the painting Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, the ladies of Avignon, to be the first Cubist artwork. The work is attributed with a date of 1907. Though many artists, friends and studio visitors have seen the work being done in Picasso's studio, it was available for public viewing only at an exhibition in 1916. Many historians consider George Barrack to have evolved the Cubist language from the formal experiments of the post-impressionist painter Zezanne. In 1907, Brack visited Picasso's studio during the creation of Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. De during this period, Brack has painted numerous landscapes of El Estac Harbor. Painted during the summer of 1908, Le Viaduc A. L. Estac bears stylistic similarity to Zezanne's landscape from which Brack evolved a sound painting style. This painting was exhibited in Paris in Daniel Henry Canvieler Gallery in the autumn of 1908, and the art critic Louis Voxelis wrote in his review that Barrack's painting is composed of little cubes. He was actually echoing a remark made by Mattis. Cubism as a term was adapted by the media to describe the new style of painting. The foreword to the catalogue was written by Guillaume Apollinaire, the famous poet and a friend of Brack. Zezanne's experiments with structure and form made a significant impact on both Picasso and Brack. The objects in Zezanne's works, whether it is a still life or a landscape, show a sense of solidity. 
but at the same time he has abandoned the traditional method of paint layering to produce smooth blends of form. Even a round object like an apple is painted with repeated oblique strokes without blending of the color layers. He was also using multiple perspective in a single work. Cubis freely adapted and extended the formal experiments of Zizan. Zizan passed away in 1906 and there were major exhibitions of his work in Paris during 1906 and 1907. Picasso and Braque visited the exhibitions and the impact is felt in their later works. Another influence on Cubism was primitive art. The interest in primitive art was apparent even in the work of the great French romantic painter Delacroix. It continued to be visible in the works of post-impressionists like Paul Gauguin. Fair painters, especially Mattis and Derain, were admirers of African art. They even collected African sculpture. Some parts of Africa were colonized and under the rule of France at the period. So it was only natural that the artist became familiar with the art of the continent. African sculpture used simplified form. It reduced the number of planes in the form to a minimum. Form was distorted and new forms invented to enhance symbolic meaning. Picasso adapted and integrated these elements into Cubism. Though he didn't understand the belief system and symbolism of these works, he was successful in integrating the form. The forms found in some early Cubist works were experiments based on African masks. Sculptures from the old Roman province of Iberia also had influence on Cubism form. Picasso's Les Demos Les de Avignon is a prime example of these influences. Cubist painters like Braque and Picasso were very successful in transforming the influences into substantial achievement. The characteristic feature of Cubist style is a deconstruction of forms into planar shapes. The forms are disassembled and then reconstructed using geometric planes. In some paintings, the fragmentation of the form is so extreme that it becomes difficult to recognize the represented subject. The theory of relativity questioned the linear existence of time. It became theoretically possible that many dimensions exist. Time may be considered as another dimension. An observer is not a passive person who gazes from a single point of view but he moves in relation to the other object. One important feature of cubism, usage of multiple perspective is related to this idea. The fourth dimension of time is represented by the deconstruction and assemblage of the form of a single object seen from multiple angles. Thus, if we observe intently a cubist work, there is a possibility that the object may be recognized as visible from many angles. The major stylistic features of cubism are simultaneity of multiple views the overlapping and the interpenetration of planes and synthesis of new forms. Some cubist works even use fragments to form objects like printed paper pasted upon the canvas surface. Cubism's most fruitful experiments spanned between 1907 and 1914. Its aesthetic continued till 1930s. Art historians divided the stylistic development of Cubism into three stages. First phase is Primitive Cubism, second stage is Analytical Cubism and the third phase Synthetic Cubism. Primitive Cubism is placed around 1907 to 1908. Primitive Cubism is not fully formalistic in approach. An element of expressionistic emotion is visible in this style. It has a primitive vitality in the way form is rendered. 
simplification of form is there, but rather than the division of forms to planes, a reduction towards primary forms like cube is aimed at. This is specially visible in the early landscapes of Brac. The early phase of cubism is sometimes referred to as Zazanism. Analytical cubism from 1909 to 2012 is considered to be a peak point of cubist style. Object being represented is broken and difficult to be recognized. The image looks like broken pieces assembled together on a picture plane. Color is very limited tending towards monochrome. Most analytical cubist works use variations of brown and light yellow. This phase of cubism is the easiest to visually recognize. The most complex period of analytic cubism is described as hermetic cubism. It is almost impossible to reconstruct the represented object at this stage. The third phase from 1012 to 1914 was the synthetic cubist period. During analytical cubist period, the images become mechanical and over stylized, thus becoming impersonal. Curved lines are avoided if possible. Synthetic cubism was thus a reversal of aims. Vibrant color schemes were used in synthetic cubist spirit. The planar division was not strictly followed. Curved lines are used freely. The emphasis shifted from scientific analysis of form to poetic usage of form. Cubist stylistic features like multiple perspective is used poetically rather than mechanically. Most importantly, a new concept of synthesis was introduced. In analytic cubist phase, the object was disassembled and reconstructed. In synthetic cubism, the image was synthesized freely. It was not a reconstruction but a synthesized structure. The sense of three-dimensional space is almost totally disappeared. In some works of synthetic cubism, Braque and Picasso used collage elements to construct the image. They pasted colored and printed paper and other material over the canvas. Texture elements are also introduced. Picasso's bowl of fruit and barracks, bottle, newspaper, pipe and glass are in synthetic style. Cubist paintings created after 1915 are categorized as belonging to late cubism. Though there is a remarkable division between these phases, they sometimes overlap. Features of different phases overlap and sometimes appear in earlier or later works. The words analytic and synthetic come from Daniel Henry Canvey's book The Rise of Cubism published in 1920. Canvey was an art dealer of Picasso and Braque. Because Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque were under contract with Canvey's art gallery, they were referred as the gallery cubist. There were another group of cubists who exhibited in official salons and thus were referred as salon cubists. Juan Gris and Lego belong to the second category. Portrait of Daniel Henry Canvilla, Paris Autumn Winter in 1910. The portrait of Canvilla was painted based on a photograph. Picasso had taken of his friend and dealer M. Canvilla. It also took about 20 sittings of the model. It is stated that the subject is made identifiable by the retention or introduction of keys or signs within the loser, more generalized structure of the figure. Accordionist, 1911, Pablo Picasso. Compare this image with the next one. It was painted in 1906 by Picasso. Picasso's portrait of the famous art collector was begun in 1905 at the end of his Harlequin period and the before he took up cubism. 
One can see the influence of Iberian sculpture and African mask in this work. Gertrude Steen in 1905 to 1906, Pablo Picasso Spanish in 1881 to 1973, oil on canvas. Picasso says that this image of the weeping woman is based on his close collaborator Dora Ma. He claims that this is a study of how much pain can be communicated by a human face. It is the features of a specific person, Dora Mar, whom Picasso described as always weeping. This belongs to a later period in Picasso's career when he was reaching to politics and war. This painting belongs to a series of works that Picasso's made in protest of Gurnika's bombing. Though Barak and Picasso were considered as the inventors of the style, there were other artists who made significant contribution to the development of the Cubist style. Juan Gris is one among them. He began to closely associate with Brack and Picasso during 1911. His works show a distinctive quality. I will show you an analytic cubist painting done by Juan Gris. It is a portrait of Picasso. It was painted in 1912. It is significant because this is an early cubist painting done by a painter other than Picasso or Brack. His early works are in the analytic cubist style, but after 1913, he began to develop a visual style based on synthetic cubism. He also began to explain the theory behind synthetic cubism through his writings. While comparing his style to Zizane, he explained that Zizane was reducing natural forms to abstraction while he is synthesizing his objects from abstraction. He used the technique of paper collage extensively. French artist Fernand Liger is credited with extending the cubist style. His painting Contrast of Forms in 1913 is considered to be an interesting cubist experiment. In the series, he uses cylindrical, cubic and planar units. He uses negative space efficiently and light and shade is suggested. In this series, he used white to mark the spaces between colors, suggesting extra volume. Lego was able to develop a unique cubist style which shows movement and activity. He is sometimes referred to as the tubist rather than a cubist painter because he used a cylindrical unit. He was ideologically linked to the common man. In his later paintings, he tried to integrate formal stylistic experiments still representing social life of common folk. His paintings were closer to the pure abstraction than many of his cubist contemporaries. He wanted to paint the images of new technology and machinery and humans in motion. Robert Deloney is also considered to be a significant painter associated with cubism. He was the co-founder of Orphism or Orphic Cubism. Orphism is a term coined by the French poet Guilene Apollinaire in 1912 while referring the paintings of Kupka. Orphism gave more importance to color and lyrical abstraction. Jean Metzinger is an important artist to the history of Cubism. He was involved with Cubism both as an artist and principal theorist of the movement. In 1912, he and Albert Gleizes wrote the first major treatise on Cubism, Du Cubism. Cubism was not limited to painting. Many sculptures were involved with the movement. Noted figures are Raymond de Champ Villain, Alexander Archipenko, Jacques Lipschitz, 
so on. Picasso had also fiddling with cubist sculpture. Paper collet is a painting technique and type of collage. With paper collet, the artist paste pieces of flat material, paper, oil and cloth into a painting. George Brack produced the first cubism works which involved mixed media. He developed paper collage and paper collet and used shreds of mixed media to produce the effect of actual paint layered on the canvas. Paint was added in addition to other media but still maintained multiple planes and multiple viewpoints in these works of art. Cubists employed methods like paper collage, paper collet, widely during the synthetic cubist phase. With paper collet, the artist pastes pieces of flat material, paper, oil and cloth into a painting. It was George Bragg, who had a background in commercial house painting, who began to employ images from print media. He used mixed media laid on canvas. Picasso experimented further and created significant works like the still life with chair canning. Cubists through their experiments began to question the difference of low art and high art. These questions were later taken up by movements like pop art. Cubism was very influential in the development of several other modern art movements. Cubism influenced Orphism, Purism, Italian Futurism during 1909 and 1914 and Vorticism during 1914 to 15 and English movement Rionism during 1912 to 14, Suprematism during 1913 to 18, Constructivism during 1919 to 32. Cubism also influenced Dada and German new objectivity group. It had wide reaching impact in the field of design and architecture. I hope learning art history will widen your understanding of art and help you enter and explore areas of your own creative faculty. It's time we conclude this session on cubism. Bye.